Episode 67 of the 2020 Digimon Adventure Reboot, aka the series finale of Digimon 2020, went out on a high note by delivering what has to be the best fight in the entire Digimon series in terms of length, choreography, and animation chops. The adventure is now over, or is it? Let's recap and review. Welcome to the final Digino review of the Digimon Adventure Reboot. It's really bittersweet to say that considering how long we've been on this adventure together. And while Adventure 2020 is ending, it's not like the entire Digimon franchise is about to be erased off the face of the earth. So if you like the idea of a channel that gives you Digimon news and discussions and updates, definitely consider subscribing. And longtime viewers, stay tuned for a special message at the end of the video, something a little new. So episode 67 takes place immediately after episode 66, thanks to the half of the team that was trapped between worlds, serving as this bridge to send the light of hope that the children of the human world created directly to Wargreymon and Metal Garurumon. Omegamon, or Omnimon, is re- built back for the third time this series. Abadamon represents the digital world's instinct to end the chain of rebirth and rebooting, while Omegamon represents the manifestation of the digital world's instinct or desire to keep existing. It's an existential tug of war, but it's not just a battle of ideas, it is very literally a clash with the Great Catastrophe's brand new horrifying humanoid final form squaring off against the Holy Knight Omegamon. There's this incredible cut to the episode title sequence when the two rush each other and we get the sound of blades clashing. Shout out to the sound design. Elsewhere, in the void area from episode 65 and 66, Seraphimon and Ophanimon are still fighting on the outside and then the four other kids return with their Digimon in mega form. I was thrilled to see this because the kids who aren't Matt and Ty are actually fighting in the final battle and will prove to be vital to winning the fight. More on that later. This finale got so many things Things right. They knew that people were concerned about the finale becoming the usual Matt and Tai show and forgetting about the other characters, and they made sure not to do that. The exterior team notices that Abadamon isn't really fighting back out here, and they deduce that it must be diverting all of its power, energy, and attention to the battle taking place on the interior with Omegamon, Taichi, and Yamato. They have this brilliant idea that perhaps if we do enough damage on the outside, we'll force it to reshift its energy away from the interior battle and make things a little easier for Team Omegamon. Then we cut to the battle we've all been waiting for, and it's an absolute spectacle. Listen, it's been a rough year and a half. You deserve some self-care. Do yourself a favor and watch this battle in its entirety. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Throughout the fight, it's as if Matt and Ty are co-pilots, each controlling one of Omegamon's arms. It's brilliant. I've never seen the series choreograph an Omegamon scene this way. Very Pacific Rim, with the two shouting at each other, giving suggestions and prompts, and teeing each other up. The arms and the body of Omegamon are animated so well, I was almost worried about the arms breaking off. The way they're animated, you feel the weight of every hit, and I thought honestly that they'd shatter and then Blitzgreymon and Kreskarurumon arms would reform like Piccolo growing another arm in DBZ. Something like this kind of ends up happening, but not quite and not yet, so I'm getting ahead of myself. We get what we believe is a finishing blow with Omegamon thrusting the Grey Sword slash Transcendent Sword into Abadamon, but all this does is serve as a direct line for Abadamon to sort of infect, sort of initiate the deletion of Omegamon, Taichi, and Yamato. It isn't looking good, but the kids on the outside keep pushing on with their plan to attack the outside and force Abadamon to refocus its attention away from Omegamon. They really go plus ultra here. It does the trick and forces the enemy to divert power to the exterior battle, giving us an opening. There's an attack from Abadamon that the Metal Gururumon cannon arm blocks as if the cannon is a blade, and we look down and suddenly we see the cannon glowing until it transforms into the golden Kreskururumon blade arm. For a brief moment, we actually have a dual blade Omegamon before he formally transforms into the Omegamon Alter S form we had hoped was coming to Digimon Adventure 2020. This form is stunning. It's a shame it doesn't stick around longer, but that's kind of always the case with a new Omegamon form. It arrives, makes short work of the enemy, and then bounces. Abadamon's last words ironically are, I vanish. I thought this itself was pretty good until Omegamon replies and makes this sequence even better. Omegamon says, no, if you are a Digimon 2, you won't vanish. Surely what you will reach next will be an evil existence or a good existence. But then Omegamon rethinks that statement and says, 
you should not be bound by either one because we hold endless potential. Farewell, we shall meet again. Again, for the DBZ people out here, this is very Goku wishing for Kid Buu to reincarnate as a good person, but thematically it works perfectly here in Digimon because this was a war between ending or continuing the cycle of rebirth, and so not only did we defeat the side that wanted to end the cycle, it will be reborn and maybe as something that isn't consumed by and defined by the desire to end. Now that's the end of the action sequence, we cut to break before wrapping things up with the rest of the episode. To recap, this first half is just a masterclass in Digimon animation. Everything works, it's stunning, the kids who aren't Taichi and Yamato, they have tons to do and they play a vital role in beating the enemy. The reality is not everybody can be the warrior class in an RPG. We have the priests and we have the mage and we have the support roles and the other kids are playing those roles beautifully here. But then after the break, we awake in this new sort of void or transfer tunnel decorated with zeros and ones. We've got the red lines around our characters like in our war game, and I was sort of scared here that we'd be saying goodbye to our Digimon partners, that a reboot of the digital world was now being initiated or something like that. Fortunately, that's not what happens. After a handful of heartfelt exchanges with each of the kids and their Digimon, again, beautifully framed and animated, we cut to the digital world where Wisemon is telling baby Digimon stories about the Digidestin like they are heroes of legend. There's definitely some kind of time skip here. Then we see Lopmon sharing stories, and then we see Leomon sharing stories, and uh, hello, Leomon has officially survived a series of Digimon. This is the brightest timeline. Congratulations, Leomon. Everyone's saying I jinxed it by making that video about him the other week. You were wrong. I was right. Leomon is too powerful to be defeated. Wisemon... <laughs> Wisemon comments that whatever the effects the merging of the two worlds will have is something that not even he can predict. I quite like the state of where we're ending the show on, where the relationship between the digital and human worlds are forever changed, and it appears that it was because of the Great Catastrophe. Abadamon attempts to consume both worlds, and that connected them in a way that had never been possible. Wisemon does add one more thing though. One thing is certain, a new life, a new Digimon is born today, and the digital world will grow without end. We see see a new Digitama hatching, the implication being that this is the reincarnation of Abadamon, but it's not like a sinister thing of the evil villain returning. It's actually quite hopeful. In this moment, the show is saying that this Abadamon can be whatever it wants to be next time. One of the Digimon asks, and I think it was Masako Nozawa, I think it's the voice of the narrator for the whole series, that Digimon asks what happened to the chosen children, and then we're gifted with this amazing final sequence of the kids in the real world, wait for it, with their Digimon. So that's one final big change from 1999 to 2020. We are not saying goodbye to our partners at all this time. We see them poking out of backpacks and wearing cloaks as if they're hiding, so it seems to me that they are in fact visible to the rest of the human world, otherwise they wouldn't really need to hide in costumes and in bags. The brothers Yamato and Takeru meeting at the Hachiko station in Shibuya is like incredibly heartwarming for some reason to me. I know the original series did a lot of the heavy lifting with the character writing, but seeing them attempting to reunite on their own was really sweet and beautiful. And then the other amazing scene is this shed with the sign Mimi's Kingdom, where the CEO herself, Mimi, is at one of the desks, and surprisingly Izzy is at the other desk working on and this is really great, working on a digital gate trial program. I'm gonna sound like such a nerd, but I did kind of get shivers at this reveal. Considering the digital world gates and the concept of going to and from from the digital world are key plot points of Zero Two. Listen, I don't think this is explicitly saying yes, Digimon Zero Two remake or reboot is coming next, but it's a fabulous little open-ended way to say, hey, we can do more stuff with this series after Ghost Game if we want to come back to it. Whether that is a transition to the Zero Two cast, or maybe we stick with the original crew in this new story about the relationship between worlds. Rounding out the episode, we have Taichi resting on her tree when he's greeted by Agumon. He appears to be in the digital world based on the little graphical glitches you can see in the tree, so it appears that this digital gate trial is working. The two set out on their next mini adventure, and we fade out. And that is how we end Digimon Adventure 2020. It has been a roller coaster of a ride, and I will have a more comprehensive, complete series review later this fall. But for now, this is the episode review, and as an episode, I think it's a fantastic finale. The show tried very, very hard in the last few weeks to end on a high note for us, and I believe they succeeded here. We can talk, and we have talked about how the show meandered for a long while before kind of getting its act together and revealing the plot 
in the final few episodes. When I go back to work on my full series review, I'll take a better look at the pacing with hindsight about how good or bad the show was at setting things up. Keep in mind, when you are watching a show week to week, you're almost like a beta tester. You're not gonna get the full story until it's complete, which now it's fully complete. So once again, if you haven't watched the episode, I'm not sure why you're watching this, please go watch the episode. Please comment below also with your thoughts on the finale. My entire day is gonna be me looking at the comments, listening to what everyone has to say about this and about adventure as a whole now that it's concluded. I will have a video on the Digino Zero Two that it tells you a little bit more about what is going to happen with the Digino now that the reboot is over, so go check that out. But friends, that is the end of Digimon Adventure 2020. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, this is kind of weird. I don't usually come out on camera for any of these videos, but considering this is the final episode of Digimon Adventure 2020 and our final review, I thought it'd be fitting to come out and say hi and say thank you for tagging along on this weird journey that's uh that's happened on this channel um i started reviewing the episodes in april 2020 it was just this weird it was just this weird morning self-care kind of thing i would do where i would wake up early on sunday watch digimon on the weekend like i was a kid again and then collect my thoughts and put them on the internet which is new i didn't do that when i was a kid and it wasn't really meant for anybody but slowly and surely a few people were tuning in and then week after week there was more people tuning in and then it became this weird thing where as of now there's 15,000 subscribers watching every week um, you know, and checking in with me and leaving their comments on my video to let me and others know how they felt about the episode. So I'm kind of extremely humbled that the Did you Know became this little hub for people coming to talk about the episode once they had finished watching it. And yeah, it's just 2020 and 2021 weren't exactly bright years probably for anybody. Um, a lot of lows and a lot of darkness and knowing that I had uh, this channel to come back to every Sunday, having the episode that was always very nostalgic and fun and exciting, but then having the actual community on YouTube who would come and watch it and talk to me and let me know what you know the videos meant to them or that they appreciated having company, that was the coolest thing in the world. So that was like a true beacon of light or hope or whatever cheesy thing you want to say throughout the year. Anytime I felt, you know, bummed out or sad, I knew that I had people excited to hear from me every Sunday. So in case I haven't already said thank you, I think I did, but thank you again. As for what's next, we're not like retiring the channel or anything like that. Digimon Ghost Game is a new series that's starting next week, in case you haven't heard. The other cool thing is that with adventure being over, now we can get into the kind of adventure post game where we can start having these videos that are like, you know, the best changes compared to 1999, the best episodes of 2020. And I hope you'll come along. If you don't, and you're just here for uh, adventure 2020, then seriously, thank you so much for hanging out for 67 weeks. And just know if you're curious and checking in on Digimon, you want to know what ghost game is about maybe in a few months, I'll be here. Okay. I'm going to go now. Uh, thank you. See you later. Thank you.